Hello, and welcome to the Current Science and Technology Podcast from the Museum of Science in Boston. I'm your host, Susan Heilman, and every week we bring you interviews with guest researchers and our museum staff covering science and technology in depth. This week, we'll learn about using a nanosensor tattoo and iPhone to measure blood sugar levels, and about the tail of the Stegosaurus. Usually, a tattoo is more decorative than functional. That's if your tattoo is made of regular ink. If instead your tattoo contained nanosensors, you could have a powerful new tool to monitor your health. Today I'm excited to be talking to Dr. Heather Clark, an associate professor of pharmaceutical sciences at Northeastern University, who leads a lab working with nanosensors. Welcome, Dr. Clark. Hello. So the technology you recently published about in um, the journal is called Integrative Biology. It's been making some headlines here and there where people talk about digital tattoos. Is tattoo really the right word for it? Tattoo is sort of the right word for it. So they're actually, instead of particles of pigment, they are nanosensors. And these nanosensors are polymer spheres, about 100 nanometers in diameter, and are sensing components are contained within the sensor itself. And the sensor fluoresces, and the intensity of that fluorescence correlates to what we're trying to measure. It sounds like you're talking about a particle smaller than I can really fathom, within which there is more than one material. Yes. What does it take to engineer a tiny particle that you can't even see to have these different materials and functions? So it's really easy, actually. Uh It sounds like it's going to be complicated, but it's no harder than making salad dressing. (laughs) And so (laughs) what we do is we put all of our chemical components and our polymer and our plasticizer, which makes the polymer soft, in the finished product. And we put it in solvent and dissolve everything. Mm -hmm. And we take a small drop of that and we put it in water solution while we are emulsifying that solution, just like you would make salad dressing where you have the oil droplet suspended in water. And the beads harden in that suspension, and we have nanosensors. The beads are the things that are 100 nanometers across? Yes. Okay. So these multifunctional nanoparticles, um, how are they introduced into a, well, in this case, it's mice still, right? Right. We're not working in humans yet. So the injector portion of this project is the one where we still haven't done much work yet. And in fact, right now, we just use a very fine needle to inject sensors into the skin itself. One day, we envision that we'll use microneedles and a self-applicator for a patient to be able to just apply it themselves once a week. Once a week. That's because this is more temporary than like a decorative tattoo. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a temporary application, not a permanent one. It's uh, designed that way to biodegrade, and then the components set of the degradation are just flushed from the system. That's great. So if, if someone's diabetic and they need to monitor their blood glucose, for example, is it definitely going to give you the right information if you have the sensor you know, in the s- a shallow layer of the skin? Will that be representative of what's in your main bloodstream? So that's a very good question, and one that we would like to answer eventually. So it's a little bit of a controversy as to what the lag time is between what your blood glucose levels are and what the glucose levels are in the skin. And certainly as you get to a more and more shallow layer of the skin closer to the outside, there's probably more of a lag time in the measurement. And it'll be very interesting because we actually have the perfect tool to get to the heart of that question, right? Because we can insert them into a very shallow layer of the skin or a very deep layer of the skin or on the arm versus the abdomen and get to the heart of what is the lag time and and how does it change? Great, so we haven't gotten into the connection between those nanoparticles and actually coming up with a number. Um, So how does that work? All the sensors have two wavelengths that we monitor simultaneously. And we divide those two wavelengths so that we can't account for differences in how deep they're implanted in the skin or what your own skin color is. And that gives us a number. The sensors are pre-calibrated so we can take that number, compare it to our calibration curve, and come up with a quantitative reading. So you shine a particular type of light on the sensors and then they emit fluorescence at two wavelengths 
and that emission is a quantitative reading of what you're trying to measure. So another thing that makes this really exciting is that you've been working on a way to get the readings from these nanosensors using an iPhone. So how did that come about? So previously we have been using a very large instrument in the lab, an animal imager. And we always knew that we were going to have to work on this handheld reader that we always talked about. My students were given a small amount of money for a student prize to develop the handheld reader for this system. Their plans and our conversations started to get more and more complicated and more expensive and more mm -hmm. difficult. And we were standing in the hallway one day discussing this and I said, this can't be this hard. It should be as easy as my iPhone. And I held it up and we all just looked at it one another and said, oh. <laughs> and my students took lights and a filter, an optical filter, and mounted it to the camera of their iPhone and can take pictures using the iPhone itself of the fluorescence. And that those pictures can give us a quantitative reading of our nanosensors. Okay, so it's an external pack of some kind that can plug into the iPhone and that has the light source you need and then the phone's camera will detect the fluorescence from those nano sensors. Absolutely, it's just a case that snaps on the back and has all the components that are needed. Awesome, so it's, I bet that anything with a good quality digital camera, as long as you calibrate it, could be useful to be the sensing Any device. Any handheld device or phone with a good camera on it, an iPad, an iPod, <laughs> should be very useful for this. What kind of chemicals can it monitor right now in the tests you've been doing in mice? We are working on glucose, mm -hmm. obviously. We have developed sensors also for electrolytes for monitoring dehydration. Um, you can imagine endurance athletes or the elderly need to keep track of dehydration levels. We constantly work on expanding the range of what we can measure further and further and further. And what we would like to have someday is an entire clinical analyzer that can be worn in the arm. Like we call it our nano clinical analyzer. So that you could just use your iPhone and hold it up and instead of taking a blood draw on a Chem 7, you could get the readout right, right through your skin. If you wanted to measure more than one chemical, would you need to have more than one type of nano droplet in that injection under the skin? Yes, so okay. you would have to have a different nano sensor for everything you were trying to measure. And right now what we do is we implant them into different spots in the skin, depending on what we're trying to measure. You could think about putting an entire analyzer into one drop, but that would be much harder. Right, because then everything would have to fluoresce its own wavelength of light, and yeah, you yes, have to absolutely. pry them all apart. Yep. Okay. I'm sure everyone asks you this, what is the time frame for going from the tests in mice to eventual use in people? It's very hard to estimate how mm -hmm. long it will take until we get to human trials. There's so much involved with it, and we want to be very careful with making sure that everything we're doing is safe and reliable. So it's probably years away. That's really fascinating work. Um, it's just amazing to me that there is a whole system in one little nano droplet. It's amazing to picture all the teamwork that's going on on this tiny, tiny scale. There's some really neat stuff coming out of your lab. Thank you, and I particularly want to thank my students and postdocs who work so hard in pulling all this together and taking some of my crazy ideas and making them a reality. Well, I wish all of you lots of luck in pushing these technologies forward. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That's it for this week's show, but be sure to come back next time for more of the latest in science and technology. This podcast is a production of Current Science and Technology at the Museum of Science in Boston, part of the Boston community for over 175 years. For more information, visit our website at www.mos.org slash CST or email us at podcast at mos.org. Thanks for listening. Thank you.